and gentlemen. My name is Vasudha Murli Krishna, and I'm the manager of Campus France Hyderabad. This webinar is the ninth in the series of webinars under the ongoing PhD tour, which started on 21st of September. These series are brought to you by Institut Francais Anand and the French Embassy here in India. We have covered varied topics in the past, eight webinars, uh, ranging from mathematics management to uh, the hot topics like AI these days. Today's webinar is again one of the sought after topics on energy and processes. A very warm welcome to all the viewers. Now, let me introduce you to my panelists today. Dr. Alexander Steitner, professor at Ecole Polytechnique Institute of Polytechnique de Paris. Welcome, uh, Dr. Alexander. Dr. Marie Odell, head of the department uh, EMPP, that is Energy, Mechanics, Processes and uh, Products, University de Lorraine. Welcome, Dr. Um, Marie Odell. Thank you. Dr. Catherine Azro, Azaro uh, Pantel, professor from INP Toulouse, Department of Process uh, Systems Engineering. Welcome, Dr. Uh, Catherine. Thank you for this introduction. Uh, last but not least, Dr. Ankita Gar, our alumna from National Institute of Applied Sciences, Lyon. Welcome, Dr. Ankita. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Mr. Uh, a very warm welcome to all of you once again. And uh, without much ado, now let me uh, introduce the Deputy uh, Attache for Scientific and University Corporations, Dr. Minakshi Singh. Um, Minakshi, warm welcome and over to you. Thank you, Vasudha. Good evening, everyone. This is Minakshi Singh, Scientific Coordinator at the French Embassy in India. First of all, I would like to welcome all our amazing panelists who are with us today and all the participants. With this PhD series, we aim to bring the best French higher education institutions to the Indian students and provide them information regarding different opportunities and funding mechanisms available to pursue higher education in France. We all know that France is a leading research-oriented country that offers an outstanding and diverse spectrum of research areas. France ranks fourth worldwide in Nobel Prizes received and ranks in world's top 10 for number of scientific publications. In France, a large share of research and innovation is done in French higher education institution in close cooperation with research organizations and companies. Now coming back to the theme of our webinar today, which is energy and process, both France and India have played a key role at the international level in the fight against climate change and promotion of renewable energies with the Paris Agreement and launch of International Solar Alliance. India and France, they are working together to develop new forms and sources of energy innovation to provide sustainable solutions to meet the increased energy demand. France also has premier institutions such as IFPN, Eco Polytechnic, research organizations and many universities that offer research and training in the field of energy and process engineering. In addition, in July 2017, uh, Emmanuel Macron, President of French Republic, launched the Make Our Planet Great Again program for international master's students, doctoral students, postdoctoral students and researchers to pursue research training in energy transition, climate change, and sustainability at French higher education institutions. Besides that, French Embassy in India provides a number of scholarships such as Raman Sharpa Fellowship for PhD, Sharpa Research Internship for Masters and Bachelors, enabling young researchers from India to pursue their higher studies in France. Students could also go through the Campus France website, which gives comprehensive information on all the French doctoral schools and also displays PhD positions available at French universities and research institutes. There are also several MOUs, agreements between French and Indian universities in this field that can help the student in pursuing a PhD in France. Towards this end, I would like to inform all our fellow participants that the French Institute in India and Campus France in India 
they are always there to guide and help indian student to follow their dream of doing a phd in france without any further delay i would like now vasudha to take forward the panel discussions with our panelists over to you vasudha thank you thank you so much uh, minakshi for that uh, introduction to the theme and a brief uh, preview about today's topic now uh, viewers i would now like to tell you that uh, these uh, webinars the series of webinars is um, brought to you by institut francais and and the uh, Fr french embassy in india and we would want you to take full advantage of all the information that is being given to you by our panelists our eminent panelists who have been here and who are here today to make sure that you achieve your dreams of having your doctoral program doing your doctoral program in france now first let me uh, ask uh, dr alexandra to uh, start his um, uh, presentation and tell tell us about the various opportunities that are there for the phd uh, aspiring phd uh, students thank you very much uh, thank you very much vasudha uh, so i will show you some slides and i will introduce you what is ip paris which is in consortium a federation of uh, several uh, institutions uh, research and uh, universities or in uh, graduate schools so if i share my screen you see my screen now i hope it will work okay uh, just to be sure do you see my screen correctly yep yes Yes. Okay, excellent. So, uh, as I mentioned, the IP Paris, it's a uh, federation of the Ecole Polytechnique and Stein's uh, Telecom Paris and Telecom Sud Paris. And it's, uh, let's say, five uh, top 10 French engineering graduate schools that we sell in French Grandes Ecoles. Uh, and the, the main ambition for the IP Paris is to provide uh, first uh, the highest level of scientific and multidisciplinary training uh, to lead the research and to especially foster innovation and entrepreneurship. This is very important. We have uh, a lot of entrepreneurs and uh, students who went and build companies, build startups, and also become the leading CEO of big companies. Uh, just to say that we are a small campus, it's just 7,500 uh, students. The staff is about 2,000 people, but it's a quite international campus, okay? One third of the students are international. And things that you might be interested in is the employability rate, which is about 95%. Uh, and there is two doctoral schools, uh, one which is the High PE Paris Doctoral School, which is multidisciplinary, and one which is dedicated to maths. Uh, for PhD students, there is about 900 PhD students. Uh, one third of these PhD students are women. And among these PhD students, it's even more international because we have almost a half of these students are coming from foreign international countries. And uh, the different topics which are uh, uh, studied in PhD, I mean, uh, investigated in PhD are biology, chemistry, chemical engineering, formation, computer science, mechanics, and energy. So I will mainly focus on this branch, mechanics and energy, because I, I'm here, uh, I mean, be, belong to these departments. You have also physics, language, economics, management. But since you are here, you can nevertheless uh, join or mix classes or some connection with the, with the other departments. Uh, just one thing maybe it's important to, to know and to, to understand is that PhD in France, it's a quite short program. It's only three years in comparison with other countries where it could be much longer, up to five years. And therefore, if you really want to start a PhD in France, unless you, are, you have already very good connection with research labs or with our partners, uh, partnership in, in research, it will be difficult if you don't start with at least one year of master. I said uh, one year of master two. 
And so the, the option is to do, if you're interested in, in energy and especially in the renewable energy, the transition, energy transition or uh, environment, environmental science, to do one year of master, the second, last year of master plus three years of PhD. So you have different masters, one dedicated to energy, one which is dedicated to renewable energy and the energy transition, which is the master of science and technology team and one master, which is uh, an international master dedicated to water, air pollution, and also energies, but this is more related to environmental science. And you can also enter in a PhD track at uh, IP Paris. Uh, this PhD track is built for a five-year program. So it will mean two years of master plus three years of PhD. And this is just to give you some examples of the tracks that were open last year in PhD different topics coming from greenhouse gas decreases, renewable energy deployment, energy consumption, and feedback to energy policies. So this is more for how to enter and how to start a PhD in our institutions. Uh, here on this slide is just the links you might be interested in uh, if you want to have more details. So I will give you the PDF of the slide so you can access and get all the details on the programs. And just to say that what is important is also the research center, the ecosystem, the research ecosystem, which is dedicated to energy and, and especially the energy transition uh, on the campus. So we built two years ago uh, uh, an interdisciplinary center, the Energy for Climate, E4C, that is really multidisciplinary in the sense that the, the, first, top, the, the first goal is to challenge the greenhouse gas decreases but to reach this goal, we need to have um, what are the link with the accurate and the most relevant energy policies, the most efficient ones. Uh, it deals also with deployments of renewable energies and also a decrease of the energy consumption or an optimization uh, of the energy consumption. And you have also um, one of the leading research centers on PV cells, which is on the campus, which is at the Institut Photovoltaic de France, IPVF, which is a cooperation between companies, big companies, EDF, Air Liquide, Total, uh, Oriva, and a research institution and uh, the, um, academic schools. And so this is one of, out of five of the most important research centers on the new generation of PV cells. Uh, I hope this gives you a very short and very synthetic overview of what kind of topics and what systems are available to uh, do a PhD on the campus of IP Paris. So I will stop here. Thank you so much, Thank Dr. Alexander. It was a very impressive and very comprehensive, but quite a lot of uh, inputs from your side. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now, uh, let me uh, ask Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. Catherine to uh, start her uh, slides to tell us more about what is on offer from uh, INP Toulouse. Okay, thanks. Um... Is it okay? Can you see my, yes, my please. screen? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to uh, briefly introduce um, the scientific core of uh, doctoral school uh, MEGEP uh, for mechanics, energetic, uh, civil engineering, and uh, process system and process engineering. Uh, so uh, our um, doctoral school is uh, in fact a multi-institution multi and multi-site um, doctoral school, uh, which is centered on specialties of, uh, uh, of, of engineering. And uh, uh, here you can see the institutions um, for doctoral school MEGEP. So um, in fact, the doctoral school MEGEP is in uh, um, the University of, uh, of Toulouse and uh, in the Department of uh, uh, Engineering and uh, INP Toulouse, uh, Institut National Polytechnique, uh, is the um, uh, scientific uh, uh, support of, uh, of a doctoral school. And you can see also here uh, the other institutions uh, that are part and parcel uh, of, our, uh, of our school. So the scientific domains that are covered by the doctoral school 
uh, are uh, very large from fluid mechanics, solid mechanics, materials, chemical engineering, energetic engineering, and also civil engineering. And uh, uh, several uh, PhD specialties are um, uh, strongly uh, related to the scientific domains. And uh, the PhD specialties that are uh, indicated in the, in the diploma are of the following ones. And of course, you will have at the end of my presentation, uh, I think the, the slides so you, you can uh, get the, 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 the information. Uh, the doctoral school Mejep uh, is, uh, I, I think, uh, uh, the most important uh, uh, doctoral school in engineering in Toulouse, with about um, 500 uh, PhD students uh, that are enrolled um, in, uh, in the doctoral school. Uh, so you, you, you can see here uh, the number of uh, PhD students uh, that are enrolled in the first in their first year of, uh, of PhD. Um, and uh, what is also uh, important is that the uh, average duration of a PhD uh, is um, less than uh, 40, uh, 40 months. Um, so it's, it, uh, it means uh, that, of course, uh, a PhD, as uh, Professor Stegner just uh, said before, um, a PhD uh, in France, this is um, perhaps uh, short related, related compared to, uh, to other countries, uh, but uh, for, even for um, uh, French students or and for foreign students, uh, it's um, uh, generally uh, it, it takes uh, uh, perhaps uh, two, three months um, uh, in, in addition to, uh, to complete the PhD. Uh, there is also a rich uh, scientific environment uh, in uh, doctoral school MEGEP, uh, and this environment is uh, represented in, in this slide uh, with uh, uh, 11 uh, laboratories, and uh, these laboratories are, uh, can be considered as uh, top-ranked uh, laboratories uh, uh, in France in the COVID fields. And uh, a lot of them uh, belong to uh, several institutions and uh, mainly uh, to, uh, to the CNRS, uh, scientific, National Scientific uh, uh, Research in France, and also um, uh, agro-research agro in RAE now uh, here. So um, there are also uh, 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 these, uh, um, these labs uh, are uh, representative, of course, of the different uh, disciplines I just mentioned before. Um, about uh, 250 uh, um, scientific uh, people um, are, can supervise the, the different uh, uh, PhD. So this means that there are, this is a, a big potential for for our doctoral school, and uh, in average, uh, they they supervise the, the scientific work of uh, two uh, two PhD students. Uh, so uh, here you you can see even if um, the PhD is uh, uh, delivered by the uh, University of of Toulouse, um, the uh, the different institutions um, also deliver. If, Perhaps our system is a bit complicated, but the, the name of the institution is also, for the moment, uh, indicated in the in the PhD. And uh, uh, you you can see here that uh, Institut National Polytechnique is perhaps the most uh, representative uh, here um, in the PhD distribution. Uh, you can also um, see in the uh, in the different figures that. Uh, the representation of the distribution uh, between uh, uh, male and female depends on uh, uh, on the discipline. <laughs> uh, so, sorry, this is uh, also written in, in in French, but I think you can uh, imagine this is uh, fluid dynamics, and mechanical engineering, uh, <clears throat> for which um, women are not very uh, well represented. 
so the question is uh, how to apply for a PhD position uh, in, in France uh, and in, in MEGEP for um, uh, you, you can contact us and uh, uh, send us your CV and motivation uh, letter. And then we will, uh, according to your profile, we will put you in contact with uh, the correspondent of uh, the laboratory. And uh, uh, so that it will be uh, uh, easier to, to connect you, you with the uh, uh, right person. Uh, you can also visit our uh, website and uh, PhD positions are regularly uh, um, uh, offered in our in our website, and um, of course, uh, we, uh, I, I didn't mention it earlier, but uh, in our um, uh, doctoral school, uh, around um, fifty percent of uh, our uh, PhD students uh, are uh, foreign. Uh, um, uh, PhD students, and they have also their, uh, um, they have a, a support from uh, their, their country. So uh, I don't know if it can be the case for for you, and uh, we can have a, a we can implement a, a cooperation with a, with a lab, and uh, also uh, uh, we can also arrange. A, a joint PhD uh, between the French and uh, and Indian uh, uh, laboratories, and uh, all uh, uh, the required information for uh, enrollment in our school uh, can be found uh, in uh, in our website. And of course, if you have a, any question, of course, you can contact me. And uh, generally, I I try to to answer or to. Uh, uh, to, to to send the, the email to my colleagues uh, that, and so that they could uh, un answer uh, uh, your uh, uh, what you are expecting. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Dr. Catherine. It was really insightful, and I hope our viewers have taken note of everything that you have said. Now, coming to uh, our next panelist, Dr. Uh, Marie Odell. Uh, Dr. Marie Odell, if you can uh, share your presentation with our viewers, please. Um, yes, I'm trying to share, but I'm afraid it doesn't work. Uh, do you have my presentation? No? Um, because uh, it answers that uh, the, the, the navigator um, is blocking the access to the shared screen. I don't know why. One, just give us one second. We'll try to. I, I just send it to you by email. Yes, please. Uh, so I'm very sorry because we tried and it worked, but <laughs> now it doesn't work anymore. <laughs> very uh, sorry. Just one second. We uh, let yes, me yes. try. To let me try to get that on screen from my side if I can. If you can try again. Yeah. Professor Marie, yeah. Professor Marie, we, uh, we request you to try again. Um, maybe now it will work because no one else is sharing the screen. Yes, but it is written, uh, Votre navigateur bloque l'accès à l'écran partagé. So I don't know how to do. Uh, just uh, Masuda, meanwhile perhaps we can have the uh, alumina intervention yes please yes please that's what uh, I was by saying. the time we'll arrange for the professor's presentation uh, professor just give us two minutes let's uh, try to get that back on screen and we'll get back to you in the meantime uh, can I request uh, dr. Ankita Gar to uh, tell us about her experience both professionally as well as personally about um, studying about uh, doing research there in France, please. Yeah, so first of all, uh, thanks for introducing me and uh, thanks for inviting me here to share my thoughts. Uh, presently, I'm working in IIT Guwahati as a Ramanujan Fellow. So uh, first I would share my experience on academic and scientific environment. Uh, and then I will share my thoughts about day-to-day -day life experience in France and opportunities after PhD uh, in brief. So uh, just after my PhD from IIT Delhi, uh, 
I joined National Institute of Applied Sciences, Leon, uh, as a research scientist, where I worked in CNRS laboratory, Set Hill, uh, Center of Thermal Science in Leon, on the project of photovoltaic uh, integrated greenhouse. And uh, uh, after successful completion of that project, I moved to another French uh, CNRS laboratory, Lucy, uh, which is a joint laboratory uh, between uh, USMB, University of Savoie Mont Blanc, and National Institute of Energy, Solar Energy, INES, which is in Chambéry. So uh, I would say that uh, both the institutes are doing very good in energy and sciences. Uh, what I feel that it's really a good combination of scientific excellence and uh, uh, cutting edge technologies with great international ambience. So uh, if you are working there or studying there or doing PhD, so uh, you can interact with uh, uh, several high knowledgeable scientists and professors. Uh, they have a strong collaborative strength at national and international level. Uh, also, you can see a very good relationship between uh, students and faculties or scientists and that actually develop a confidence in a student and make them a fearless, confident researchers, like they are ready to present uh, any time their work with full of confidence. Uh, though I did not do my PhD from there, but uh, I lived four years, I worked four years there. So I closely observed that. So I was amazed with their PhD training and uh, uh, that's in three years only. That's also a very positive side. Uh, and one more excellent point uh, is that that uh, uh, what I realized that their researcher is not limited to their domain. They are not limited to uh, just their mentor, their lab, but can really explore the things with other scientists, uh, professors by having frequent exchange of scientific approaches and ideas. Uh, like I had also got the opportunities to have uh, valuable scientific uh, discussions to have valuable scientific discussions with many scientists, professors on many aspects and learned a lot. So uh, I would say that if you join or if you join PhD or if you join uh, a project there, actually you join a team, you develop a team and that could be your future partner as well, like what I have today. Like I'm still in uh, collaboration with French professors, scientists and engineers. So uh, to work or study in France is an incredible way to learn more about yourself and the world. Uh, France is an inspiring place to study, to work, and uh, of course to live also. It is made up of many beautiful cities uh, and uh, uh, each city has their uh, own unique identity. So living in France actually welcome you uh, into a warm, diverse community that support you to become a well-rounded, universal person uh, since you find there are many people from different countries. And uh, I would also uh, like to talk about language. Uh, so French language is really not an issue. It's not a barrier. So I also went there without even having any basic knowledge of that. Uh, but it was okay. French people are very generous, sincere and uh, uh, friendly, so who value independence, hard work and humor, so they are very helpful. So they help you to accommodate there. And uh, um, there, there is no problem at workplace, especially in academics uh, and in, at scientific places. But yes, I would encourage you all to learn this language because it will help you to know their culture closely. Uh, like if you are visiting museums, uh, historical places, then you will find everything in French. So learning French is always a plus point in many aspects, in my opinion. So I think why not? We should go for that. And for that, there are some international schools of French languages, like I did summer school from Chambéry, international school uh, of language, of French language, and my university paid for that. So, uh, and there is also one more uh, advantage is that that you can also interact but with the training of this French language you can also interact with uh, so many different persons uh, from US, UK, China, Spain, uh, Africa etc uh, who come to learn this language especially. So uh, and then I would say uh, that after PhD uh, you can also find some employment and career opportunities too uh, like CNRS, every year they recruit uh, scientists, though it is really tough. It is very difficult to crack that. Uh, and uh, and uh, one more plus point is that you can opt the application e either in English or in French, in which you are comfortable. 
so that is also a, a positive point but yes that is very difficult to uh, get that like your project should be very fundamental and you should have a very good record of qualitative publications and uh, uh, for teaching also uh, assistant professor are also recruited every year in france uh, so uh, good teaching and uh, scientific opportunities you can also find there after your phd and uh, apart from that i would say that the medical facilities uh, available in france are also excellent my experience was really good uh, i had two treatment there like wisdom tooth extraction and some root canal treatment and i'm really impressed with this uh, high quality treatment doctors are very generous so uh, here uh, usually we think that medical treatments are very expensive in france which is true but if you are on work contract if you are working there uh, then your medical expenses are covered by uh, social security and mutual insurances so uh, le like 70% is covered by social security and rest you uh, is covered by uh, mutual insurance insurance so which is really a good point so um, i lived in two beautiful cities uh, chambéry and lyon and both were the tourist place but i explored many other different cities like nc nantes etc uh, and i found all of them so beautiful and full of historical places so uh, you can also explore explore such amazing sites uh, chambéry is a lovely place with snow mountains and lakes uh, uh, it's a center of many beautiful cities and countries like uh, you can reach geneva italy uh, or by bus or by train in an hour only so and i would just say that uh, working and living in france uh, was an incredible experience for me that made me a better person in many aspects of life and an independent researcher group uh, group leader uh, today i'm continuing the work in field of solar energy in iit guwahati so i'm supervising and teaching doctoral and master student so whatever i learned from france i am trying to implement here in india with my student so uh, i would definitely give credit to this experience with uh, what i could reach up to this level um, thank you thank you thank so you. much dr ankita it was wonderful to hear you uh, i mean you have covered everything that we could possibly think of uh, hearing from an alumna who's been there who's done that uh, thanks once again i think many of the questions that are being put uh, would or would be for you you have already finished i mean uh, you have ans answered them thank you so much thanks, it's a pleasure talking to you, to you. Uh, if there are any questions we'll we'll uh, i'll direct it to you once we start okay. our question and answer session okay. dear viewers please uh, keep sending your questions to the question and answer uh, box that's there on the screen uh, after uh, no, uh, the other panelist shares her presentation we'll take up the questions now over to dr mari odell for um, her presentation we oh thank you so much <laughs> thank you thank you very much and my um, my apologies uh, it doesn't work it worked uh, previously so um it's my pleasure to to present you the doctoral school simpe of the university of lorraine university so my name is mario Odil simono i am head of the scientific research department energy mechanics processes and products of this university and uh, University of Lorraine is a multidisciplinary university with uh, 65,000 students and about 2,000 PhD candidates. Uh, as you can see on the map, Nancy is located in the northeast of France. It is uh, one, one hour and a half from Paris by high speed train. And uh, it is also on the heart in the heart of Europe because it is very close to Germany, Belgium, Luxembourg and Switzerland. Um, I am here today on behalf of uh, Professor Christine Girardin uh, who is the head of the doctoral school SIMPE and she was uh, with you uh, yesterday I think. So if you could move to the next slide please. Thank you. Uh, so the, the doctoral school SIMPE, that means science and engineering of pro molecules, products, processes, and energy. Uh, 
there are about uh, 200 PhD students, so one tenth of the total of the University of Lorraine. And two thirds of these uh, PhD students are foreign PhD students with uh, 17 nationalities. And uh, about uh, 55 are in their first years, and there are about 50 defenses uh, per year. So in this doctoral school, on the right side, you can see that we have five specialities, which are energy and mechanics, engineering of processes, products and molecules, industrial systems engineering and innovation, biotechnological processes, and wood and fiber sciences. And uh, this, they, they are um, uh, shared between five laboratories, uh, the first one, FP, is mostly on innovation. LCPM is mostly on macromolecular chemistry physics laboratory. LERMAB, it is on wood materials. LEMTA, it is on theoretical and applied mechanical energy laboratory. And LRGP, reactions and process in engineering lab. So um, LCPM, LEMTA, and LRGP are uh, joint unit with the French uh, CNRS while uh, LERMAB is, um, is joined with uh, INRAE. So uh, I saw that there were many questions about the financial supports. So in France, we have different financial supports, um, which are listed here, but uh, it's difficult to understand. Uh, the, to find the PhD, it's important that the, the, the PhD supervisor uh, can propose a, um, a PhD and a financial support, and is looking for a candidate. <laughs> That's the, the, the three ingredients. <laughs> so next slide, please. Thank you. So the, the, the scientific issues that uh, we are dealing with are uh, listed here, transformation of resources, for the production of molecules, products, energy, sustainable development, and transformation processes. So there is a list that you can, you can read, but today we are most focused on energy. So we are working on energy, energetic transitions, the industry of the future, and the subjects uh, deal with renewable energies, fuel cell, hydrogen, biomass conversion, methanation, smart grids in electricity, optimization of energy uses, uh, in, also in building, in civil engineering, and so on. And um, the industrial and professional uh, sectors that are concerned are also listed uh, below. Wood industry, food, but mostly for, for you today, energy, chemical industry, and uh, also uh, different types of industries about pharmacy, civil engineering, recycling, and also, also safety and risk management area. So next slide, please. Thank you. So to apply, you can, um, you can um, use this, uh, this, this, this website. Uh, there is an English version. And uh, you, can, you will see the eight doctoral schools of the University of Lorraine with the uh, SIMPE. And uh, you, all, you can also uh, contact uh, directly uh, Christine, Professor Christine Gerardin. Uh, her email address is uh, given uh, below. So thank you very much for your attention. And I'm ready to answer your questions. So I'm done. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Marie Odile. Uh, it was very interesting to listen to whatever you had to say and hope uh, our viewers have taken note of everything that you had to say. Now, uh, each one of you have given uh, us so much lots of questions coming up way. So uh, without further delay, let's go to the questions that most of them have uh, put in. I also see that uh, you have tried to our panelists have tried to answer a few of them beforehand. Anyhow, I'm going to start with the first question that is the very, very basic one, which um, many people have asked, and that is, how does one apply for these PhD programs? Uh, Dr. Alexandra, if you could answer, is there any specific uh, thing that they need to do for them to apply from here in India? 
So I, I think it, it may depend from the institutions and from what is, what, what the, what is the background of the students. Uh, if the students uh, already have a, a master and already have uh, experience in research and, and maybe also have some contacts already because they do some research already in India with French uh, labs or the French institutions, uh, they, I think it's uh, the best way because they will be directly recommended for a PhD in France. Otherwise, since the Indian system is, uh, the academic system is quite diverse, and it's not always easy for us to uh, know what is the level, what is the, what are exactly the records of the students. Uh, and especially for a PhD in general, uh, we try to recruit in PhD students who have at least one year of master in France. I mean, this is uh, the, the wide, wide, wide majority of case, at least for the IP Paris institution and, and probably other for, for other universities. Uh, when you don't know exactly the students, where do, do he, come, he comes from, the, the back, even if you come from a very good university, uh, it's important to have a, a, a better idea or maybe do some internship in France before so we can know you better, okay. So in general, it starts, I would say, the, the, the most easiest way is to start with a PhD, uh, sorry, a master, and then to, uh, to get in touch uh, with a lab, research centers, and, and start a PhD. Thank you. Uh, is it the same for uh, you, Dr. Catherine, and uh, Dr. Marie uh, Odil? Do you have anything else to add to what Dr. Alexander has uh, just said about entering uh, to uh, or uh, getting an admission for a PhD. Is it something different or is it the same? The, the conditions, uh, yeah, the, the conditions are, are, are quite similar oh. to um, apply for a, a PhD. Uh, the most Im important thing, of course, is to uh, um, uh, to, to have a, the equivalent of uh, grade of, uh, of, of master, but we can examine uh, uh, all uh, applications uh, all around the, the, the Europe. Um, the most important thing for a foreign student, of course, as for um, a French student, is uh, uh, the scholarship. Uh, so um, for uh, foreign students, there are, of course, there are different uh, opportunities um, around, I think, um, perhaps 30% um, uh, of uh, our foreign students um, have a, a French uh, scholarship for their PhD, but there are a lot of uh, uh, foreign students uh, who uh, enter uh, our PhD program uh, with um, a scholarship uh, allocated by their uh, uh, by, by their country. So I don't know if it can be the same uh, for uh, with uh, with India and with uh, uh, Campus uh, Campus France. But with a lot of uh, countries, there are agreements, uh, and uh, the, the PhD students um, uh, can. Um, have their own scholarships from their countries to uh, to enter our PhD program. Thank you so much. Um, in the uh, Dr. Uh, Mario Del, can I uh, ask you one question that's come from one of the uh, viewers? Um, do you have any eligibility criteria for them to uh, enter into a PhD program? Uh, all of you have said that uh, having a, uh, I mean, having entry into a master's and then going ahead with PhD is something that is desirable. Is um, if that is uh, not happening, if they have done a small internship with you, uh, then how would uh, you view their candidature? Is a CV and a motivation letter or a statement of purpose, do they, do they carry any weight or how do we go about it if it is not directly from masters? Yeah, I think that uh, my, uh, my French colleagues uh, are right. It is uh, uh, 
uh, good thing if uh, the student can do uh, his or her master uh, in, in France, but uh, if not, if uh, he or her he or she has a master in India, it, 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 it also works. Um, I think we are mostly interested in uh, his or her uh, scientific skills and um, that uh, he can present in the motivation letter and the CV. Uh, it's good if, if uh, he or she can uh, do a, a, an internship in France to, to be sure that uh, uh, it's okay for, 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 for him or for her to, to, to continue in France. But I think that uh, the, the, the most important point is that uh, is to find a financial support because in France, we don't uh, we don't take PhD students if we don't have a financial support. So there are different possibilities. The first one is that we have a financial support and uh, we we propose a, a PhD. Uh, another possibility would be that the student uh, has his own uh, financement or from from the country or from uh, from an NGO or I don't know. Uh, Yes, that's the point also to, to, to find the, the financial support. Perfect. Uh, so to sum it up, if they come to a master's in France, first, that is first they start with a master's and then uh, apply for the doctor the, the doctor programs, it would be better. If not, at least a small uh, uh, internship is desirable. Uh, otherwise, if they are known from institutions here in India and if they apply, then they would be looked at is what you guys have to say. Now, coming to the next question, there is uh, one thing that almost all of them uh, keep asking, that is, is there any test, um, English test, language test that they'll have to take or um, uh, for them to be eligible, or is it okay because they are coming from an uh, English-speaking country? Uh, well, I, I can say that French is not mandatory. Okay. <laughs> this is a con con condition that uh, um, we have a lot of question about uh, is French mandatory? So for us, no, it's, it is not. Uh, but um, of, of course, it's uh, important to uh, communicate. So in that case, um, we uh, English is of course uh, mandatory <laughs> to uh, to ease communication. Uh, thank you so much. Thanks, uh, uh, Dr. Catherine, for uh, answering that. Uh, even as our alumna had said, a bit of French is always good, so start from here and then take it to the next level. Now there is a question about, uh, there is a question from one of the viewers who is saying that uh, uh, they have completed their MSc in construction management. He already has a research proposal too. Would that be appreciated uh, if he has one during the admission process or how does that work? Uh, having a research proposal already, does, does it count or uh, not is his question. Anybody? Uh, uh, maybe I can answer. Yes. Uh, you mean that uh, he has his own research proposal? Yes, he already has a research proposal and he's asking if if it would be, uh, if it will uh, be appreciated, will it have mm -hmm. some advantage to go ahead with if he applies for uh, the doctoral program? Um, by research proposal, you mean uh, the subject, the PhD the subject? subject? The subject, yeah. yes. So uh, it is, it can be interesting if uh, if a student uh, has his own research proposal because it shows that uh, he is very motivated and interested uh, but uh, it is also uh, it can be a, a drawback because uh, it must fit with the scientific interest of the lab yes. so if you come and say uh, i would like to work on this topic but uh, the it is not a priority of the lab or a priority of the supervisor uh, it can be an issue. So it's good, it, it can be good to have a, a proposal, a, a research uh, proposal, but 
the student should be opened in case it doesn't uh, fit. Thank you so much. Um, now, uh, all of you have, yes, please, yes, please. Uh, Dr. Alexander, I will add, please. I had some comments exactly that uh, if you have your own topic already, you need to, to find the good partner, I would say. It's like a wedding, you know, you should to be two to, be a, uh, to do a PhD. You have to do, have a, a PhD advisor, a lab that will host you and, and your motivation, your, uh, your background. So if this do not fit, it, it won't work, okay? So what is really important is that if you have some idea of what type of PhD you want to do, to go in the, the lab or so you, you, you may look at the institution or the topics, the papers that were published to see if it fits, then you try to get in contact with, with the people and, and uh, yeah. Perfect. Of course, it's important to show that you are able to propose PhD topics, but uh, as, you, as you've seen, when you have uh, PhD fundings, when you have grants that are dedicated to PhD, in, in general, there's already a topic which is associated to these grants or, or already some kind of topics, okay, some direction. So you should try to, should match. <laughs> should Otherwise match. It won't. With, with the example that you have given, I think everybody understood it perfectly. Now, um, uh, if uh, the, another another question, I think that you can take, Dr. Uh, Alexander. Does the master's program before the PhD, that is the integrated uh, master's program, have any kind of scholarship? When when one starts with the master's, do they have any scholarships at the master's level? Of course, the PhD. When they come to their doctoral level, they have the stipend and they can apply for it. They can look for it, etc. That is understood. But at the master's level, do they have any kind of scholarship that would be available? So, of, of it depends on the institutions. It depends okay. on uh, the, the different type of institutions. So my colleagues may have different type of uh, grants or program that could be open for uh, international students. Uh, as you mentioned, when you are a PhD, you, are, uh, you have a research contract with institutions. So you are paid, you have a salary, you have the social security, you have all that which is included. Uh, of course, when you are a student, uh, you may have some, uh, some I would say, uh, scholarship to help you to pay your uh, local expenses. But this, these are very specific and it depends on the institutions. Uh, I, I can talk about the one that I know, the IP Paris uh, program. So we, we have this PhD track program, which, is, which offers you uh, two years of master. So you will have a grant for two years to do your master. And, but to, to enter in this program, it's highly selective, okay? Mm -hmm. And you, you, you must be a, a very, very, very good student to, to, to have a chance to get the, the program. And, and your background should fix, should um, uh, met the topic that, we, that is ass assigned to this uh, PhD uh, tracks. So you, you should check on the, the, the website. And I, su I suppose that the other uh, universities also offer some grants or scholarships, but here again, there is a very few, so you must be uh, really excellent to get them. The world is competitive and of course, they'll have to be competitive enough to win the scholarships or uh, the grant, whatever that they're looking for. Uh, now, uh, is there any fellowship uh, for pursuing PhD in environmental science is the next question. Um, Dr. Catherine, is there uh, yeah, any uh, fellowship for pursuing a PhD program in environmental science uh, is the next question. Mm. Uh, I, I can't see the question um, in the... Um, uh, environmental science specific uh, such a specific track is not mentioned is there any fellowship is there is what they're asking uh, doc okay um, i mean and, and environment to yeah. earth and science uh, ocean atmosphere and environment yes i don't know okay i i, I can i can yes please yes i, I we, we have some topics dedicated of course to 
the environment and to the uh, in engineering uh, in the field of environment, of course. And there is some, if you, if you look at the PhD tracks that uh, we offer, there is something, few of them which are dedicated to the, green, the decrease of greenhouse gases and uh, the environment's um, mm. impact on the environment. There is, yes, some scholarships. And these are the typical topics for PhD as well. Uh, uh, but here again, the, 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 what I suggest is to first to do a master and then to, to do a PhD. Mm. Okay. Um, Our doctoral school is not centered on environment. This is why um, I, I don't know the, um, the exact program okay, okay. related to environment. Uh, we are more process process. Yes. Uh, mm. yes. May I add something? At the University of Lorraine, uh, we were recently with the environmental uh, doctoral school, but we, we split it. Uh, but there is a, a doctoral school dedicated mm -hmm. to uh, environment. Yeah, uh, the name is Sirena. I will write it uh, on, on, on the conversation. Um, and But uh, also in the laboratory of chemical engineering, we deal with gas treatment, water treatment, and uh, so soil treatment also, and also on the uh, environmental assessment of uh, processes, like uh, life cycle assessment of processes, for instance. So you, in, in, for these topics, anyway, you can contact Professor Christine Girardin, and she will um, she will uh, uh, transfer to the right person. Uh, I, yes, maybe please. just I make some make some comments. Uh, the, the the term environment is a quite broad spectrum. Okay, uh, here we are talking about uh, more the aspect of the the dynamics, the ocean, the atmosphere, the environmental mm -hmm. process. I, and in Toulouse, I have a lot of colleagues who work in Toulouse in Serfax. I mean, there is a Meteorological uh, Research Center, uh, Meteo France is in Toulouse. I mean, there is a lot of, of, of course, of, of uh, program dedicated to the environment, uh, but not in, it's, uh, it's not in our doctoral school. Not in yeah. your doctoral yeah. school, okay. No. Uh, but uh, you mentioned but, Surfax, I think. Yeah, I, think yeah, I, mean, I mentioned uh, Surfax, uh, but um, Surfax, in fact, um, uh, um, this is the the, the section which is uh, more dedicated to uh, uh, combustion and, and, and so on, so more process oriented, I think. Process oriented. Okay, yeah. thank you. Uh, uh, we are coming to the end of our session. I think I can take two more questions. Um, does work experience add weightage to a profile? I mean, after uh, their undergraduation, if they have research experience or work experience in the field that they are looking at, will it be an advantage when they apply for a PhD program? Scientific experience is mandatory for us uh, with a letter of recommendation uh, from the supervisor uh, of the candidate uh, during it is a uh, or a uh, master internship and um, this is very important for us uh, to have uh, an objective um, uh, comment on the capacity of the candidate to uh, to carry out um, a, a research work uh, with uh, with autonomy and uh, so a work experience but a scientific work experience okay so um, there are many questions where uh, uh, our viewers have uh, said that they have some kind of a profile that will that match, etc. These are individual questions that we uh, would at a later stage uh, send it to you for answers. Uh, if uh, all the professors, if you are okay with that, then maybe you can share your email IDs on the chat box. So if there is any specific questions from the viewers that they can uh, send it to you. If you're not okay with that, then we will look at the questions, we'll uh, filter the questions and uh, ask for answers from you at a later stage. Um, I think we uh, we have taken almost all the questions and uh, if there is anything left viewers, we'll be more than happy to help you out with that uh, individually. And uh, may I, I request um, all our panelists to um, uh, 
give the final words as uh, to wrap up the session, starting with uh, Dr. Catherine. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> what can I say? I, I think um, um, in, the, in the past and now we, uh, we have um, several uh, uh, Indian uh, PhD students. Mm -hmm. And I think a, a good thing is uh, to, uh, to get in touch with them. Uh, so that they can share their their experience uh, with uh, with you, and uh, and generally uh, we try to when we have a uh, an application we try to also to find uh, a colleague. We of course we we ask him or her, we ask her uh, if uh, he, he's, he agrees uh, uh, to to get in touch, and I think it can facilitate uh, also the. Uh, the enrollment and, and so on. Thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Mario Odil, anything that you would want to add, please? Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, so uh, I would like to thank you again for inviting us to present our universities. And uh, as uh, Dr. Alexandre said before, it's uh, like a wedding that we have to find the, the right subject, the right supervisor, the right student, and also at the right time, because in France there is also a, an issue of seasonality. Uh, in, in theory, it is possible to start a PhD at any moment in the year, but most often it is uh, in spring, in, uh, sorry, in, uh, in, uh, in autumn, in fall, and uh, generally the subjects are, there is a, a competition for subjects uh, in spring, spring, summer, there are a lot of subjects. At the moment there are less subjects available. So uh, if, you, if you can try by, uh, by uh, starting a, a master, just to wait for uh, for next spring, it, it could be a good idea as well. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. Yeah, I, I add something. <laughs> yes, uh, we have the same uh, uh, application. Uh, I think uh, process, uh, but I think it's uh, uh, very important for uh, the candidates to to get in touch uh, with uh, um, the, the professors um, and. If they want to to apply for a PhD position, if they just apply uh, without any contact, of course, it, it doesn't work. It, it will not work. So uh, do not hesitate to, to contact uh, directly the, the, the professors in the in the laboratories. It's a uh, good uh, a good uh, place uh, for entering a PhD position. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Alexander, anything uh, that you would finally add and then we'll wrap up the session? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, you, you mentioned that contacts are very important and the best way I would say to have contacts is uh, really I, I push you to do a master in France because uh, you will see that the education in France, what is really required at the research level, uh, you will do during your master an internship and at, during this internship, this is the best way to have contact with all, all the research center in France. From abroad, it's much more difficult. And even if you send emails to professors, honestly, we receive, I would say, the hundreds of emails, uh, different emails. So if we get an email from a student that we don't know, no one recommends us, the, the, the chance to, to get in touch, unless you already have some contacts in India will be much more difficult. And I just want to add that in the field of uh, energy transition and uh, renewable energies, uh, I'm at the head of, of two masters who are dealing with this issue and the energy transition. And it's, it's really important for us to have really an international panel of students. And we are really looking for students coming from all the countries, all the continents, and Indian are, of course, welcome. So welcome to France. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, Dr. Ankita, you have already uh, said yeah. everything that you had to say. One sentence to just wrap up and then we'll say goodbye. Yeah, so in one, thank you so much. So in one sentence, I would just say that uh, it could be a PhD from France, could be a wonderful opportunity. So go for that. You can really learn a lot. So for which you will be thankful to throughout of your life. So thank you. Thank you so much for wrapping it up in a very wonderful way.
Uh, so we reiterate PhD in France is something to look forward to. And we have given you lots of information. Our viewers, please take advantage of this. And then we'll see all of you in France. Uh, Meenakshi, uh, over to you and we'll wrap up. Thank you, Osuda. I would like to thank all our panelists who joined us today. Thank you, everyone. I hope you are able to and uh, able to uh, answer most of the queries of our uh, participants. And uh, yeah, I'm hopeful that uh, most of the students they are able to receive as much as information from you and would be able to pursue their dream of doing a PhD in France. Thank you, Osuda. Mm -hmm.